Nigeria bicameral legislature, consequent upon proclamation by the President, according to Section 64, Subsection 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, CFRN, as amended, inaugurated the 9th National Assembly on June 11, 2019. Also following Section 50, Subsection 1B, a renowned and experienced legislature, Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, was elected by worthy votes of members elect. Mr. Speaker, in his opening speech, pledged that the Ninth Assembly will be a house of reforms. The house must be reformed before the country can be reformed. We simply cannot and must not fail. End of quote. Subsequently, Order 18, Rule 55 of the House Standing Orders, 9th edition, the Committee on Insurance and Actuarial Matters, was established and inaugurated on 2nd October 2019 alongside 107 other committees of the House of Representatives, having Right Honorable Darlington Gideon Ngokocha representing Isialangwa North South Federal Constituency as the chairman, while Reps Ahmed Usman Jaha Babao representing the Moa Goza Chibok Federal Constituency as the deputy chairman, as well as 25 other members of the committee.
Committee on Insurance and Actuarial Matters swiftly commenced work according to the prescribed mandate, jurisdiction of the committee as stated in the House Standing Rules, which covers the following. Oversight of insurance companies that take insurance cover on government property. Ensuring diligent and adequate insurance policies covering all federal government property and agencies, including but not limited to the CBN, FIRS, NNPC, etc. Ensuring the efficient and effective performance of insurance companies and brokers through the National Insurance Commission, NICOM. Oversight of the National Insurance Commission, NICOM. Oversight of the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC. And annual budget estimates. And so, the committee started by convening the maiden meeting of October 3rd, 2019, where the capacity chairman in his speech assured members that this grade C committee will be the envy of other committees in the 9th Assembly and desires of the 10th Assembly members elect. You have been given a responsibility. The budget expressly states that, shows that you have been given a responsibility to say, okay, I have an insurance input somewhere. And when you have been called upon to come and uh, give account of that, you will now dodge and say that you should not come. It's not true. So I think what we need to do is if I have your support at the end of the day, when we take our actions, then they will go and meet the speaker. The speaker will come back and call us. Then we will now ask Mr. Speaker, when you were inaugurating this committee, did you tell us that some of these agencies should be uh, kept aside? And which I know the speaker will not invite us to do that. He will not talk to them. Then they will, by their own action, they will come. So I think that's what we need to do if I have the support of the committee. Strategically, the leadership prowess of Right Honourable Darlington Mwokocha was exhibited in putting together the work plan in conjunction with the Secretariat, which began with a consultative briefing with all the stakeholders as outlined via the standing orders of the House. Early enough, you could see the direction of an all-inclusive leadership. Remember that leadership is about directing effectively to prompt productivity. No wonder John Maxwell said, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. Committee on Insurance and Actuarial Matters at this point is already paddling the wheel, the direction of envy of its counterparts ably led by vast, knowledgeable, competent, credible, and efficient chairman. Therefore, the following consultations held with the following stakeholders. The National Insurance Commission, NICOM, 10th October 2019. The Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund, 16th October 2019. The Nigeria Council of Registered Insurance Brokers, NCRIB, 23rd October 2019. The Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, CIIN, 29th October 2019. And the Nigerian Insurance Association, NIA, 1st November 2019. At this point, members of the committee were adequately informed with the information elicited from the various interactive sessions and were better equipped for legislation, oversight and lawmaking for good governance and policy formulation in the insurance section and Nigeria at large. My members are in all the nooks and crannies of the Federation, spreading the gospel of insurance. So all these rights are must be properly looked into. They should be able to earn their income and their whatever. The, the scenarios, don't just let it hang in. You should be able to define the classes of agents and what you do and all what not. So we know some agents who carry briefcase and roam the whole town 24 hours. And um, anyway, when you get to the castle, I made this side to be very, very clear. 
the kind of agents who are now whatnot and so on. Is it the quantum, the volume of you are turning and so on? Thank you very much. The insurance industry is an industry every person in Nigeria should work very hard making sure that it will function effectively and efficiently. The cash and carry approach we have in our system from health to transport to oil and gas in all the sectors is not helping our economy in any way. The attribute of a firm leadership was showcased at the removal of NDIC from the committee mandate the concise resolution of the entire committee members and the endorsement spoke in favor of the committee on insurance and actuarial matters. The committee saw its first budget defense with NDIC and NICOM, where they presented their 2019 budget performances and 2020 proposed budgets. Presentations were received from the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, and National Insurance Commission, NICOM. In the act that emanated in 2004 and a subsequent review, insurance cover in the name of a group life insurance coverage must be provided to all federal government employees and the sum assured must be equal to three times annual emolument of an individual employee. Um, they not the like they are not they should be here to answer that question. They are not here, and we are a lot of things on their behalf. We are even asking them questions that they will not know, because they are not the player of all this money. I want to move that the founder listed stakeholders, critical stakeholders in the health and the insurance sector be invited as the date to come and be vote so that we have all details to get to the roots as the chairman has said. Considering the technical nature of the sector, the committee saw the need to embark on trainings and retreats and then resolved to acquire more information on better ways to legislate, make laws, oversight and collaborate with stakeholders and so NICOM organized an outstanding retreat which was held at Uyo La Meridian Hotel and Resort on the 21st to 23rd February 2020. Thereafter NDIC came up with a well-packaged exquisite retreat held at Eco Hotel on 20th to 22nd March 2020 mind-blowing expository that enabled the committee swing into action and empowered the legislature towards better lawmaking. This series of retreats did not just stop there. Many thanks to NICOM, NIA, NCRIB and especially NDIC for making it count at all time with many of such as follows. Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers, Retreat on Insurance Bill, October 3rd, 2020. Nigerian Insurers Association, Retreat on Insurance Bill, November 16th, 2020. Technical Committee on Insurance, March 3rd to 5th, 2021. Stakeholders Retreat on the Harmonization of the Insurance Bill, 2020, Southern Sun Ikoyi, June 12th, 2021 Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation NDIC Retreat 16th to 18th June 2021 Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation NDIC Retreat November 25th 2021 Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation NDIC Retreat May 5th to 7th 2021 and many more What is the INDI standard depositors claims <coughs> and is the NDIC compliant in that regard because there are no specific mention of that because one of the issues you have is the awareness that the public does not have about that one of the concerns your fans have is the fact that they do not believe your compensation your claim the depositors claims commensurate 
I think the collaboration of NSRC here should be able to provide a good framework to control finance houses because uh, they, at that time, they offer interest rates that is beyond normal. And at the end of the day, they use that to collapse. So I think NDIC and CBA should be able to sit down and provide a framework for the control of the finance houses. To prevent is always better than to kill. Um, there are a few banks, even as we speak, that people have major concerns about, I won't mention the names of those banks. And I don't know how, how proactive they are in collaboration with the CBA and other state agencies to ensure that um, you know, we don't get a decision where a lot of banks collapse and then we have issues we get able to cover um, the limited coverage which uh, your mandate allows. So what is the status of collaboration between the CBA and NDS? Because both of you are limited to that. The sense of all those things, we tell them the benefit and limitation. For finance houses, they are not licensed by central bank to take them also. They are investment uh, Okay, sir. So, and uh, we can see that at this uh, we have uh, all those uh, rules. Don't be deceived. We don't use a big payout because I, I, there was a situation where somebody came and uh, said, "If I finance house, they give money to finance house. How much do you pay that uh, uh, for junior interest? So I want to know. First of all, business do money is something to in this kind of economy. So and those are the kind of liabilities that you have to be able to understand the awareness to be able to get. Uh, uh, that we give the public the what the um, uh, like I said, collaboration between the central and very people are doing for are doing very well. To commend members of this committee for having this committee a priority. As you see them seated here, substantial number of them are committee chairmen of grade A committees in the house. But because of the transparent nature, because of the leadership ability of the chairman of this committee, this is my humble self. You see them here. They are committed to the cause of this committee as well as insurance and actual matters in this country. We thank you very much and we will remain grateful for making us to succeed as committee leadership in the National Assembly. I would like to use this opportunity to inform you that we have a grading of committees in the House. This committee was created in the last Assembly and now this committee is more or less one of the best three committees in the Assembly. With the enormous knowledge garnered from those retreats, the committee resolved to look into the insurance contracts entered into by the underwriters. All insurance companies with ministries, departments, and agencies, and their challenges of non-payment of claims. And so, the committee embarked on a series of investigative hearing with MDAs who contracted the underwriters. The investigation and revealing engagement involved Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, OHCSF, Nigerian Police Force, NPF, Ministry of Defense, MOD, and other paramilitary, Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation, NTDC, University of Benin Teaching Hospital, UBTH, Nigeria Defense College, NDC, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, MFA, Federal Character Commission, FCC, Budget Office of the Federation, BOF, NNPC, CBN, NCS, and the whole lot of others were interacted with, including insurance companies, underwriters, and firms who undertook the contracts of different times until such time when COVID-19 pandemic set in and continued after the COVID-19. You said that you wrote a letter. I didn't receive any letter from the National Assembly. Eight Assembly wrote directly to my office and which I replied and closed everything. I gave narration of all these things. If there's any person that should give this kind of explanation you're giving, 
that looks somehow bleak, not from your background. Because you should understand that once a particular session exits and ends, a new one comes in, it is a new chapter altogether. And I think your background should have, should have well, quite explicitly made you to understand this. And I don't want to go into that to say what background I mean, and you should know what I mean. In case of extra ministerial departments and corporations, the director general or officer of coordinate responsibility. And why this is important is because that this person is responsible for ensuring compliance with the provisions of this act that is in section 22A by the, and, and will be liable in person for the breach or contravention of this act or any regulation made hereunder. Now, why I'm saying this, Mr. Chairman, is there are issues of concerns about compliance with Procurement Act and other statute provisions by this agency. And from the introductions here, the head of this agency is not here. So I'm wondering whether they are competent enough for us to hear them today. Maybe they should go back and come with the head of the agency. Yes. We see the same kind of uh, scenario uh, in all the projects. I'll give you an instance of uh, investment in ICT. Uh, for some of us have been there for a couple of years. The ICT used to be another, uh, I don't know how to call it, another drain pipe. Every year computer, every year computer. And it became an issue until this house, you know, brought it into the front burn. And eventually, a decision was taken that no agency, you know, makes provision or embarks on independent procurement of ICT you know, without having clearance from NIT, uh, is it NIT, uh, NIT, yeah. And eventually it became so, and that provision in the budget just fizzled out. So the same thing is happening in insurance. There's enough reason, cogent enough, for us to just gloss over their inability to attend to our invitation. However, from the various investigative hearings, the committee noted so many grievous lapses and resolved to fix it through the legislative instrument. Here, heralded the almighty Consolidated Insurance Bill 2020, and so a series of legislative tools and methodologies were engaged, including retreats, consultation, public hearing, meetings, technical sessions, to ensure that all stakeholders are carried along, that the insurance bill is all-encompassing and to meet global best standards such that it stands the test of time. I'm highly pleased with the representation and uh, the deliveries. Um, I don't think there's any other thing any person will expect. Expect what, except what I have just uh, had also today. One major thing which uh, we sought to do is making sure that at the end of the day, nobody will feel that he's been left behind. And I'm sure we are driving towards that path. Most times, if we follow the actual route of lawmaking, we would have ended with a public hearing, and now we're going to do the, uh, using the legislative instrumentality to drive the process. But because I feel this is something that will be in the public domain, both the producers and consumers we meet somewhere. Uh, that is why we are taking extra miles to making sure that uh, we have it better than this. That really is making sure that uh, we deepen the understanding about insurance. It's still a little bit strange to people, but I assure you, with the committee and the kind of thing we want to do, the penetration will be awesome as we move from this level. And at that point, if you invite the consumers, they will definitely run down because the tiny lines that usually scare people away from getting engaging in insurance will be completely removed. It is worthy of note that prior to the consolidated insurance bill, the House referred other items to the committee, bills and motions, including 
failure of the National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS, to function optimally, referred September 26, 2019, to Committees on Insurance and Actuarial Matters, Health Institutions and Health Care Services. Need to investigate breaches, impunity, and other infractions of some federal government institutions on insurance and actual matters. HR 271-12-2019, referred December 12, 2019. The House referred to the Committee on Insurance and Actuarial Matters, Insurance Bill 2020, with a long title, a bill for an act to repeal the Insurance Act, CAP 117 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, and enact the Insurance Bill 2020 to provide for a comprehensive legal framework for insurance business in Nigeria and for related matters 2020, HB.967, which was read for the first time on 14th July 2020 and second reading 20th October 2020 and passed for a third reading after sequences of effort deployed. The Bill 6 to repeal, re-enact and consolidate the Insurance Act 2003 with other existing legislation on insurance sector in Nigeria. Some of the key proposed amendments made on existing insurance laws include stamping out of fake insurance through reform of motor vehicles, third-party insurance business and marine insurance business, having a robust framework for the enforcement of compulsory insurance, having an enduring framework for the implementation of risk-based supervision, creating a suitable mechanism for the effective resolution of insurance dispute, having a mechanism for providing robust training for regulatory staff, restructuring the ECOA's brown card scheme, improving claims, settlement, procedure by reducing timeline and the extent of documentations required by the insurers reducing the impact of floods and other natural disasters on the people by establishing a disaster management pool to be managed by the insurers under the supervision of the Commission, and several other standardized reforms. Excitedly, today, we are proud to inform you that the bill is before the President, seeking assent. Beyond the Consolidated Insurance Bill, an attitude of result has projected the committee with the NDIC Bill 2023 HB.2196, which is currently before the President for assent. The House Committee on Insurance and Actuarial Matters wishes to humbly appreciate you, House leadership, for counting on us worthy to serve in this capacity. NDIC you kept the committee updated at all times. NICOM, you made it memorable. NIA and NCRIB, your coordination of the industry was key to the committee's operations. CIIN, education and more education is needed to place the industry on better pedestal. Committee members, you are simply the best. It was your unalloyed cooperation, dedication, hard work that brought us all thus far. Secretariat, the documentation is apt. Well, I thank God for my deputy, uh, right on Jaha, who is a uh, very wonderful young man, always ready to be uh, very supportive and uh, he supported me in all aspects, in my mind, all the members of the committee, as I've already said. Uh, the Committee on Insurance and Material Matters, I met it uh, uh, when it was not too organized because there were too many uh, lapses in terms of operation, in terms of uh, relationship between the, uh, the uh, 
insurance uh, committee and the stakeholders in the insurance uh, industry. Um, I try to see how to bring all those together to achieve one common thing and that was to amend the Insurance Act. Uh, because the Insurance Act itself is just, uh, just a very modern act that uh, never allowed the uh, agency or the institution that's supposed to oversight all other uh, regulate all other the institution of the industry itself we never had uh, any uh, new way of doing the proper thing that is in tune with the best international practice. So all I did was to set out the roadmap, inviting all the stakeholders to announce the roadmap to them from the ministry and agencies and the uh, the yeah, insurance association, the brokers association, and all the stakeholders who embraced and wrote out the roadmap, which they embraced fully. And with that, we started having our meetings and retreats, trying to train and expose the member, the committee, my committee members to insurance, uh, all that has to do with the insurance industry. And I can assure you that, that the roadmap really helped us to achieve a whole lot. As I speak today, the Insurance Act itself from NICOM have been amended, waiting for presidential assent. And not only that, we didn't stop within the uh, that of insurance industry alone, because we were oversighting the uh, NDIC, the Joint Deposit Insurance Corporation. Uh, they had a Moribond uh, Act as well, which we have amended as well, which the President assented to. Uh, last week before he exited office. With all those put together, uh, the insurance industry and the NDIC itself are on the threshold of working more better with a harmonious relationship in the entire industry and effectiveness and efficiency in the entire industry to achieve the best results. So I'm, uh, I'm so happy that uh, we have achieved a whole lot. Uh, legacy is not about this you can touch, but there are things, policies and directives and things you can you can feel that also add value to what we are doing. So I'm happy that uh, the assignment uh, I was given as the chairman on the self-assessment level, I'm happy that we tried as best possible to achieve as much as possible. And uh, by the special grace of God, I want um, the people that will come after me uh, to still work hard to, uh, to leverage on the much we did to bring it to a very higher height. Because every economy that, that does not revolve in insurance is in health, is in debt, compulsory insurances, and everywhere. Any economy that does not revolve in insurance is always, will always find it very difficult to survive. So I would be happy that in the next few years to come, this present uh, uh, amendment will, you know, will still have another amendment because of how dynamic our society is. Actually, my experience of Committee on Insurance and Arterial Matters under the leadership of the Right Honorable uh, Daniel Mwokocha, who is at the same time uh, Senator elect from Abia. Is, it was actually a very perfect experience, perfect in the sense that uh, from there were a series of cordiality of relationship that we gave us a humble self as a community, both to other members of the committee. And so it's a committee that allowed people to express their views. We completed to do the other discussions that is going on. The little more culture is a very transparent chairman of the committee. So we had a very, very perfect uh, uh, relationship with you. And I appreciate the best in this future end of us. Just to wish and congratulate our colleagues that came back to the house and those that have been in the Senate.
my experience with the committee, um, especially since uh, 2019, that I took over the leadership of this commission, has been a very good one. And I must say that uh, it's been an, uh, a committee that is quite unique in several respects. Um, the level of transparency, the level of commitment, the level of dedication to duty is uh, uncommon. And this is, this is something we cannot take for granted. Um, for me, with respect to their leadership, to the leadership, uh, of the committee, uh, the, the, the chairman of the committee, the deputy chairman of the committee, these are people who are hard workers uh, in terms of uh, commitment to the, their goals. Um, I remember so a case that stand out uh, clearly was the case of the bill. Uh, I remember how much uh, the, the chairman uh, devoted his time to make sure that uh, it becomes a reality. Um, and uh, we, we, we saw uh, the level of uh, scrutiny that was uh, put into the, the, the job. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite it's, it's something that uh, uh, marvels me. And of course, we had several engagements with the committee, either at retreat or at meetings with them. And the, the, the level of knowledge that is played by members of the committee, it's something that uh, we, 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 is quite commendable. Um, so I, I truly want to appreciate uh, the committee and its leadership um, for the support that they have given to the commission under my leadership and uh, the kind of uh, dedication uh, to issues that concerns the commission, uh, the commission uh, over the same period. In a straight, uh, in a straight jacket, uh, of course, people came with various knowledge and various experiences, and these were displayed in the course of our engagement with them. So on behalf of the governing board, the management and staff of the commission, we want to thank the committee and especially its leadership uh, for, the, for all that we have enjoyed uh, through their tenure. I'm aware that uh, some members of the committee might be going to the Red Chambers uh, and some probably still retain, while some will be going for some other uh, assignments and commitments. Uh, I wish everyone uh, the best. And for those that will be remaining, I hope that uh, the same uh, kind of support that we enjoy from the Ninth Assembly of the committee, uh, the Ninth uh, Assembly will also be extended. Uh, in the, we will also enjoy in the 10th Assembly. Our public policy objective is to protect depositors and contribute to the stability of the financial system. And as such, we recognize the fact that there is no way we can deliver on these policy objectives without collaborating with our key stakeholders. And we have recognized the National Assembly as one of the critical stakeholders. I want to sincerely thank the Committee on Insurance and Actual Matters for the support they have been giving to the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation. I want to specifically thank the leadership of that committee and the entire leadership of the National Assembly for the support they have rendered to NDIC. It has really helped us in delivering on our core mandates as deposit insurer within the Nigerian financial system. I am using this opportunity to express the profound appreciation and very well wishes of myself and my members. First, for the outgoing chairman of the House of Rep on the insurance and actuarial matters. Distinguished Senator elect Dalitin Fukucha and the entire members of the committee for the supportive role you played to the insurance industry in, the Nigeria, in Nigeria throughout the duration of your tenure. You were able to effectively bridge the communication link between the National Assembly and our Council and the insurance industry generally through your effective, responsive, legislative oversight. In all, we hope that the 10th Assembly 
will keep the tempo real and further look into ways of recapitalizing and penetration of the insurance sector, build confidence through payment of claims, media fireworks, advertising insurance value chains, insurance education to the public, hence to strategically deploy concerted and deliberate effort to ensure global best practices domiciled in Nigeria insurance sector. Furthermore, the amendment of the NDIC Bill 2023 HB.2196 was brought to the committee from the Senate for presentation on the floor of the House. The committee rapidly handled the entire legislative process and it was quickly passed on the floor, which has resulted to the transmission to the President for assent. <laughs>